Hello, my name is Jack and I'm an implementation specialist for K-Series. And in this video, we'll show you how to complete your import file. Let's get started. Firstly, when you access the import file, you see there are multiple sheets at the bottom of the screen, including three offering some help for the important parts of the file. You'll be able to find extra help for how to identify combos, how to correctly build your POS or menu screens, and how to set up optional further reporting. The part that you need to complete is the sheet named enter your items here. And this is where we'll head to next. In this sheet, you'll see some examples of items that relate to the help pages. You can go ahead and delete these before entering your own items. At the top of each column, you'll see a small red triangle. If you hover over any of these, it will show you a brief description of what needs to be entered in each column. What I'll do for you now is go through each column explaining what needs to go in each one. The first one we'll look at is the SKU column. SKU stands for Stock Keeping Unit and is the individual code assigned to each item. This is how the system identifies an item, making it a really important part of your item. The good news is that if you don't have existing SKU or PLU numbers from a previous system, you can just leave this column blank. We will then assign them upon importing the items for you. If you'd like to use the numbers from a previous system, please be careful to enter them correctly for the relevant items. Name column. This is where you enter the name of your items, specifically what will appear on your customer receipts. The most important thing to remember here is that you cannot have the same item name more than once. This column will come to you with a filter highlighting anything in red that has been entered more than once. Some other important points for the name column are, if something is sold in multiple sizes, list them all separately. For example, if wine is sold by the bottle, small and large glass, list them all separately. If you're going to work with combos, ensure that all modifiers are listed only once. For example, you could have different milk options for coffees, you only need to list each milk once. Or you may have different toppings for pizzas, each topping only needs listing once. If an item is going to work as a modifier, it does not need to have a screen. If you're going to track your stock within K-Series, you need to list what we call the source item. And this could be something like a keg in order to track your pints. Price column. This is where you enter the standard price of an item. It's important in this column that you enter a price for every item. Even if you do not charge for it, please enter zero. Anything without a price listed will be imported with a variable positive price, meaning your staff will be required to set one each time it's selected on the POS. Selection column. This is a really important part of the import file if you want to save a lot of time going forward. The selection column is where you identify what should be a combo. A reminder that a combo is an item that can be modified by another item. A good example of something that could be a combo is a coffee, where you'd be able to select the coffee followed by a choice of milk. Or something like a pizza, where you could select the flavor followed by extra additions or items to remove. The most common example of a combo is any spirit followed by choosing a mixer. If you think something should be imported as a combo, please enter a star in the selection column. You do not need to enter a star for anything that will be used as a modifier i.e. milks, toppings or mixers. It's important that you do this now as once an item is imported as an item, it cannot be changed into a combo. Accounting groups column. As you may remember from webinar one, accounting groups are an important part of the system as they control the reporting, VAT and printing of an item. Each item must have an accounting group entered in this column. If one isn't entered, the items will not be imported. The good news is that you do not need to create these in advance. If you enter them in the file for the first time, the accounting groups will be created automatically upon the import. It is incredibly important, however, that you are consistent with how they are presented in this column. For example, if you enter cold drinks with a capital C and capital D, but later enter it with a lowercase c and lowercase d, the system will create two different groups. Screen column. 
In this column, you'll be able to create what your menu looks like on the POS. It is important to remember the limitations in place before completing this column. You can have up to 20 screens displayed down the middle of your POS, then up to 36 options per screen or subscreen. The first term that you enter in a cell here will create a main screen displayed down the middle of your POS. To create a subscreen, we then use the to hashtag method. If we take wine as an example, and I wanted to break them into colors and sizes, I would enter wine, hashtag, hashtag red, hashtag, hashtag bottle. This would put my item behind the bottle subscreen and set the workflow as you see on screen now. It is really important with the screen column that you are consistent with how each screen is presented. For example, if I enter wine with a capital W once and later with a lowercase w, it will create two different screens. Button name column. This column is optional and there if you'd like your item to be called something different on the POS compared to the customer receipt. Leaving this section blank would just mean your button name is the same as the item name that you entered earlier. Button color column. This is the color of the button on your POS and completely optional. If you leave this blank, the button will just be blue. If you are going to choose specific colors, please ensure you only use the colors listed in the button colors sheet at the bottom. If a color is used that isn't in this list, the item will not be imported. Take careful note that gray is spelled with an A and light red is all one word. The last two columns on the sheet are the statistic group and cost price, both of which are completely optional. The statistic group column will allow you for, to create more flexible reporting. Once up and running, you'll be able to report on all the items via the accounting group, but also within the statistical groups for more specific reporting. And the cost price, again optional, this will allow you to track the profits and margins of your items. Please note that this column only goes up to two decimal places for a price. Once you're happy with the import file, please take a second to review it before saving as and changing the file name to your company's name. We receive a lot of these files and it makes it a lot easier for us to identify them when they have your company name on. Once you have saved your file, you can send it back to us at hospitality.ob.emea.en at lightspeedhq.com. We will review the file and if all looks good, we will have your items and menu uploaded within 24 hours of receiving it obviously excluding weekends and holidays. We may need to send it back to you just to make some minor changes if we've noticed a few things wrong with it, but we'll point that out on any email. You're also welcome to organize a one-on-one -on -one session with myself or an implementation specialist colleague should you be struggling with the file, but just ask that you have completed at least some of it, if not all of it, before arranging this. You can contact us via the information you see on screen now. Thank you so much for watching this video. Good luck with your import file and have a great day.